this video, I will graph a few lines using the slope and the y-intercept. In the first example, we're asked to graph the line y equals 2 thirds x minus 5. I notice that this equation is given to us in slope-intercept form. I first identify for myself the slope is the number 2 thirds, and I write down for myself the y-intercept as a point. The y-intercept is the point 0, comma, negative 5. Remember that y-intercepts occur where the x value is 0, so we clearly see the slope is 2 thirds, and right there is the y-intercept given in the equation. The first step is to plot the y-intercept. The y-intercept is a point on this line, so I plot that point. I know that this point is on my line. I then travel the slope to another point on the line. The slope is 2 thirds. Remember that the definition of slope is change in y over change in x. So this means that the change in x is 3, the change in y is 2. So every time we go over increasing the x's by 3, we will go up and increase the y's by 2. So I put my cursor here on the point 0, negative 5, which is a point on my line. I then go over 3, and then I go up 2, and I plot another point, because this point is also on the line, because it is over 3 and up 2 from the previous point. I then can travel over another 3 and up another 2, and this is a second point on the line. And I know that all these points in between on the same line are also there. So I can fill in the rest of the line. So here is a sketch of the graph of y equals 2 thirds x minus 5. Let's try again. We're going to graph the line y equals negative 1 half x plus 3. Again, I identify the slope is negative 1 half. I identify the y-intercept is the point 0, comma, 3. I plot the y-intercept at 0, 3, and then I travel the slope to plot another point on the graph. So the slope this time is negative 1 half. That is change in y over change in x. So every time I go over 2 on the x, I will go down 1 on the y. Every time x increases by 2, the y decreases by 1. So increase x by 2, decrease y by 1. So I put my cursor on the y-intercept, which is a point on the line. Then I go over 2, down 1, and plot another point. I can plot another point. Over 2, down 1. And here is a sketch of that graph. Graph the line y equals 4x. Again, we want to first identify the slope and the y-intercept. This time, it may not be as easy for you to clearly identify the slope and y-intercept. It looks a little different. I don't have anything added over here. But you can go ahead and rewrite this equation in the form y equals mx plus b. I notice I do have that mx part, but I don't have anything added. I don't have a plus b. So really, I'm adding nothing. I'm adding 0. These two are equivalent equations. Adding 0 is not really necessary to write. So y equals 4x is the same as writing y equals 4x plus 0. But when I look at it this way, I can clearly see the slope is 4 and the y-intercept is 0, 0. And now again, I plot the y-intercept at 0, 0, and then I travel the slope. The slope is the number 4. I want to compare that to change in y over change in x. I could write 4 as 4 over 1. And when I write it that way, I can see 
the change in x is 1, the change in y is 4. So I will go over 1, up 4. That's how we travel the slope. So I put my cursor on the point that's on the line, and I go over 1, up 4. Plot another point on the line, and then sketch my graph. y equals negative 2. Again, I want to rewrite this in the form y equals mx plus b. This time I don't have an x term, so really I could say I have 0 x terms. Subtract 2. Notice that this is the same thing as our original equation y equals negative 2. I have no x's, and then I subtract 2. But when I write it this way, I can clearly identify the slope is 0, and the y-intercept is 0, negative 2. To plot this graph, I plot the y-intercept at 0, negative 2, and then I travel the slope. The slope is 0. I write it as a fraction, 0 over 1. Compare it to the definition, change in y over change in x. Change in x, I go over 1 on the x, and I'll go up 0 on the y. Let's try that. I put my cursor on 0, negative 2. I go over 1 on the x, and I go up nothing. I go over 1 on the x, and go up 0. I go over 1 on the x, and go up nothing. I'm plotting a horizontal line. Graph the line y equals 3x plus y equals 2. Again, I want to rewrite this in the form y equals mx plus b. So I need to solve for x. I subtract 3x on both sides, which gives me the equation y equals negative 3x plus 2. This is the same equation as our original equation, but now I can clearly see the slope is negative 3, and the y-intercept is the point 0, 2. I plot the y-intercept at 0, 2, and I travel the slope. Negative 3 is the slope. I write it as a fraction, negative 3 over 1. Compare it to the definition, change in y over change in x. That means I increase x by 1 as I decrease y by 3. So I increase x by 1, decrease y by 3, and here's another point on the line increase x by 1, decrease y by 3, here's another point on the line, and sketch my graph. For the last example, we're going to graph y equals, excuse me, we're going to graph 2x minus 5y equals 12. I again want to rewrite this equation so I can clearly identify the slope and y-intercept. I will go ahead and add 5y to both sides giving 2x equals 5y plus 12. I subtract 12 on both sides, which gives 2x minus 12 equals 5y, and I divide the entire right side by 5 and the entire left side by 5. So I get 2 fifths x minus 12 fifths equals y. Don't forget that 5 needs to be divided into every term the negative 12 as well as the 2x. So its slope is 2 fifths, and its y-intercept is the point 0, comma, negative 12 fifths. Now, students often find that uh, plotting decimals seems a lot easier than understanding the fraction. So you could write this as 0, comma, negative 2.4, and that's fine. So I plot the y-intercept at 0, negative 2.4. That's somewhere between negative 2 and negative 3, not quite way, halfway there. And then I travel the slope, which is 2 fifths, over 5, up 2. So I go over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up 2, and I'm still a little bit below the x-axis. There is our 